Oh, hey there. How's it going? Hey, wait a minute. Are you follow following me? <sighs> what are you doing for the rest of my life? Recently, I posted this on my channel. Unless you've been living under a rock, hiding in a doomsday bunker, or just living in a bubble, there is no way you've been able to avoid the chatter of the new Elgato Facecam Pro. And when you go on YouTube, you can scroll right on down the line and video after video is going to pretty much tell you that this is by far and away one of the best webcams, if not the best webcam you could possibly buy. So then you're all excited. You put it in the shopping cart. Three hundred dollars is any webcam worth three hundred dollars and my answer to that was no a webcam for three hundred dollars i mean you're within a hundred dollars of getting a sony a6000 with a stock lens but at least then at four hundred dollars you have the ability to upgrade to get better lenses a sigma 30 millimeter f1.4 stop lens which is just over two hundred dollars a sigma 60 millimeter lens if you like the wide shot that's a little over three hundred dollars the jump in video quality is monumental but for three hundred for a webcam that is literally just going to be in one spot and never move and only do one thing capture your live stream footage to me, it was just too close to the price of an entry-level DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera or even a GoPro Hero 7 Black for $200 with a capture card can capture that same kind of footage, but at least you can take the GoPro with you out somewhere. So again, at least the GoPro checked more than one box. So I was like, no, absolutely not. I was wrong. It was in this video that I essentially said that in my opinion, that there is no webcam out there worth $300. And I also said that it was in my opinion, and when I went on YouTube, pretty much the universal opinion, that the Elgato Face Cam Pro was the best option out there for $300. It had the best video. It was the go-to purchase for webcams. I also was wrong. So Insta360 had seen this video and had something to say about that. They reached out to me in an email and said, hey, Mike, we saw your video where you had mentioned that you believe while you don't agree that any webcam is worth $300, we want to challenge you on two things. Number one, we believe our webcam is worth $300, and we believe that you would put this above the Elgato Facecam Pro once you take a look at it. What? So I rised up to the challenge, rised up, I accepted the challenge, and Insta360 sent me this. It is the Insta360 Link webcam. This little guy right here, tiny little guy, just to kind of give you a comparison, look what it, look at the size compared to the Elgato Face Cam. And the Elgato Face Cam Pro is even wider than that, but look how tiny this thing is. How can this little guy right here pack a punch that would change my mind on whether or not there's a $300 webcam out there that is worth your money? It's a gimbal. This thing comes with a three axis gimbal, facial tracking, and a whole bunch more. And we're gonna get into it in this video, a level up. Okay, so now we are in the user interface and already I'm loving it. One of the things that I loved about the Elgato face cam was how user friendly that interface was. Your shutter speed, brightness, sharpness, the degrees in which you want the field of view to be. It started at 82 and you can go down from there to kind of crop in your shot, white balance, had all of those things. So I think that's what really separated it from the pack. This user interface gives you a ton of more options that allows you to do even more stuff and more wonderful things to your live stream. So let's get into it. Right off the bat, you're gonna notice that there's three settings up here, gimbal control, image settings, and more settings. We'll get into those. On the bottom left-hand corner here, you have the camera, which says preview on or off. So you just click that off and then back on. So when it's off, it allows your camera to show up in whatever live stream package that you're using that it wasn't able to go through before. Right here in the bottom left-hand corner, we have our resolution, 3840 by 2160, that's your 4K. Then there's 1920 by 1080, that's your regular HD, and 1280 by 720. If the camera's doing 4K, why would you offer 1280 by 720? 
Well, live stream platforms like Twitch and Facebook Live, I think only allow you to do 720. So I capture video in 4K and bog the system down with all that unnecessary information. If all you're doing is just doing a live stream on those channels, it reduces the workflow that your computer or the server is having to handle. So that's what it looks like in 720. I still think for 720, that's amazing. Okay, then here's regular HD. I need to shave looking at that. Wow. Okay. And then when we bump up to 4K, boy, you could see every little detail in there. I mean, everything. So all the blemishes and the warts and all. There we go. Let's go ahead and look over here. We've got four buttons on the bottom. We've got our button for tracking, all right, to enable our tracking. We've got whiteboard. Basically, if you've got a whiteboard in your shot where you're trying to teach or do a presentation, you put one of these on each corner of the whiteboard and what it does, I just dropped that, butterfingers. So what it does is whatever is inside these four corners, it will, when you click this button, go right to it and focus on whatever's inside. Crop everything else out and go basically zoom in and focus on what is inside those four corners. So that's a really cool feature there. Then we have right here what we call overhead mode. Now overhead mode is something we would use if you've got this camera mounted to a tripod or a mount where it basically goes up and over top your desk so it's mounted directly over top your desk. It could be pointing right at you when you want it to, but when you click this, if I've got this thing mounted in such a way that it's over top my desk, whether it's mounted to the wall or mounted to the ceiling, whatever it is, when I click this, now watch what happens. I click it and it shoots straight down. So as you can see, the gimbal is staying focused on the desk. So no matter how you move your stand, if it's on one of those, like a boom arm, and you're moving that around, it stays locked in. So when it's in desk view mode that you see here, it will point down at your desk and focus on whatever media you have in front of you that you're trying to share with whoever's on the other end. Very cool feature, I love that. Okay, so over here takes the screenshot. So if you're recording a video for YouTube and you're done and you just wanna take a quick, a quick screenshot, it's a one-stop shop camera, you know, and then start working on your thumbnail. Another cool feature. All right, over here is record. If you're trying to record a video for your presentation, you can record it here. For a class, college, whatever it is you're trying to present to the students, you can record it from here. So again, it keeps everything very simple, very compact, and all in one stop. Okay, so let's get up here and get into these settings that we see up in the corner. This thing is amazing right here. Let's say that you don't want that facial tracking right now. It's moving around too much. It's too much of a distraction. We're going to turn our facial tracking off. Now I can operate the camera and where it goes right here. And this is your toggle switch. So I can click this right here in the upper right hand corner and I can go left with it. Hey, I can go right with it. I can go all over the room. Don't judge that little corner right there. I've got wrapping paper, Christmas presents to wrap and all kinds of stuff. And I'm in the middle of a remodel in my room. So stuff is like half done. I haven't really figured out what I'm going to do as a whole moving stuff as I go around. So anyways, you can move the camera up, down, left, right, and boom. I love it. So now it's gone back to a position where there's a big gap between your head and the top of the screen. People, they want the proper framing. Now, preset positions solve that problem. So you can save up to six presets, so let's add one. And then there's position two, right? So now it's already saved. So there's my main tight shot, and you can see that's already saved in there in this position. So then all I have to do now is rename it the high shot. I don't know. All right, so then we click it, right? you hit right click when you're on it, and hit update, and it saves that. So if I were to add the shot and not hit update, just rename it, and do like Tom, I don't know who Tom is, I'm Mike, but if I were to do Tom, but not right click it for update, if I were to just leave it like this, it goes back to high by default. So in order to get it to save, after you put that name in, before you do anything else, right click, update, and it's saved. That's that screen. Let's move on to the next one, image settings. On here we have right at the top, auto exposure. I have mine turned off. I like my very specific settings, but if you're not savvy in all those things, you leave it on auto exposure. And as you can see, it did change a little bit. It's not a bad shot. If you were to using this, it would work just fine. We're great. No one would complain. It's a beautiful shot, works good. With auto exposure, so basically you're compensating for whatever the auto exposure does. But I leave mine off. 
and I like to set it right here. Now, the reason I have it set to 400 is I have my lights set exactly how I did with my Sony a6000 with the stock lens to start the video. It requires a lot of light. It's not a good low light lens to work with. The two lights that I have in front of me, the Lytra Beam and the Elgato Key Light Air are at 100%. So I have my ISO at 400, but look how well it performs when we start dialing the lights down. So you can see right here on my screen, my Elgato key light is at 100%. And you see the image quality that we have right here. Let me bring it down to 20, which is what I usually like to set it at where it doesn't give me a headache. We still have great image quality. And then my light beam and turn it down. Okay, so those are the minimal settings. Now the reason I've got... Okay, so this is Future Mike. I'm sitting here editing this video for you guys, and I wanted to add in a side-by-side -side comparison video of the Elgato Facecam Pro and the Insta360 Link. Now, while I don't have the Elgato Facecam Pro, and the reason is I don't want to spend $300 for a webcam that is a one-trick pony, and I sure as heck don't want to buy one just for the purpose of saying don't get one, but I still want to make sure you guys understand what both look like at their absolute best. So I went to Harris Heller's channel and I went to his review on the Elgato Facecam Pro. Now, you know, when he does a video, the lighting's right, the technology's right, the editing is right. He is going to do everything he can to make sure that the Elgato Facecam Pro has its best foot forward. So having said that, I'm going to compare his video using that webcam comparing it to the footage that I have of the Insta360 link in different lighting situations, but at least you guys are going to be able to look at them side by side and decide for yourself which one is better. Right. Let's take a look. So for my image setting right here, you can see 400 exposure. Now it's a little bit darker, right? But I can bump it up and I'm not losing video quality, all right? You're starting to get a little bit of that white haze that I think you noticed in the clip with Harris Heller and... No one's going to complain about this on your live stream. Now you're not getting the headaches and it still captures great video. And I think this is where the Insta360 really shines compared to the Elgato Facecam Pro. I think this performs better and darker lights with a lot more RGB in the background. So if you're a live streamer or a podcaster, uh, gamer, whatever it is, you got a lot of RGB lights. I think this camera actually does a better job for you because it is an F1.8 whereas the Elgato Facecam Pro is an f2.0. And what that is is basically it's the f-stop. So this allows more light to come in, and it can function a lot better in lower light situations than the Elgato Facecam Pro, which is what I like. I like to dim my lights down, nice relaxed setting. I don't have everything beaming in my eyes and beaming in my face. And then again, if this is still a little too dark for you, you can bump up the ISO, 500, 600, 600. 700 so now it's a lighter picture if you want lighter and the image quality is still i think exceptional so again options but what i like about it is it gives you more ability to keep your room darker than the elgato face cam pro does all right so shutter speed is 1 over 50 this allows you to change your shutter speed if i'm shooting 30 frames per second your shutter speed needs to be 1 over 60. the reason why it's at 150 you'll notice that when i bump this up to uh, 1 over 60. You can see here as I lean back, there's a little bit of flickering in that purple right there. And in order to get rid of that flickering, literally just by bumping it down one little bit to 50, gets rid of that flicker. Oh, I'm on 1 over 80. I'm going the wrong direction. All right, so there's 1 over 50. There's still a little bit of flicker there, but not much. Moving on. Auto white balance. Okay, so all my lights in my room are set to 5600K, which is daylight. So I turn that off and set it to 5600K. I know what all my lights are, but if you're in a room and you don't know what the warmth is, just click auto white balance and it does the job for you. Brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness. I always fidget with these, but when you leave it at this default settings, it's still a great shot. All right, more settings. Let's get into that. We got our gesture settings. What this basically does is you see right here, auto tracking. So if I put my palm up by my face, it activates tracking. Now it's gonna track my face. Elgato Face Cam Pro can't do this. No, no, it can't do this. Okay, that's trippy. We're stopping that. It's got zoom. So if I hold my L button right here, hell button, if I hold my hand in an L shape, I'm too close, that's the problem. Okay, there we go. So I can zoom up or down. All right, when you're really close, it doesn't work as well. I'm literally like maybe 18 inches from the webcam for the shooting of this video. But if I were sitting back, 
uh, it would work even better. And the reason you would want to zoom in is if you're like on the other side of the room, you hold that hand signal up and it'll zoom in on where you are. Whiteboard, if you hold the P symbol, it will look for the whiteboard that you have these stickers on the four corners of and immediately go to that. And then if you hold the P symbol back up, it will go back to your face. So it, it's engage and disengage is what these hand signals do. It engages auto tracking, disengages. Now tracking speed, I have this set to slow because I think this is a more natural kind of transition from one shot to the next. I'm sorry about the audio, I'm moving around. I should have done this with my uh, one of my wireless microphones that I have. That, should have, that would have been better. Let's go ahead and move this to normal. Okay, so now if I move, it gets to, it follows me, but it gets there quicker, all right? It's not a slower movement. And then there's fast. So if you're like one of them fast movers, fast talkers, fast preachers, you're bouncing all over the room as you're preaching from home or teaching, you're getting into it and you're just, you're just kind of going here, but you don't stay there long. It really does what it needs to, to ensure that your face stays on the shot. Now, one of the things that's also important to be in fast mode is if you're doing a podcast with someone and you're side by side, so your box is smaller that your face is sitting in, this allows you, oh, I just put my hands up so it disengaged the auto tracking. All right, we're back in, auto tracking's back on. So if I'm sitting there and I'm wanting to move around as I'm talking on someone else's podcast in that little picture in picture box, this thing will work faster to make sure that you stay in that little box that's on the screen. I always put it on slow because for the most part, I'm going to be using it here in the station and I don't want you guys to get seasick or any kind of motion sickness as this camera tries to keep track of where I'm at and keep up with me. All right, so enable auto tracking right there. Link will start tracking you when you manually adjust the gimbal towards someone. Enable single tap tracking, single tap link to start and stop tracking. AI zoom. So you've got these three options here for AI zoom. When you click this, it always tries to keep your head framed in this way. Then in the half body, it will zoom out. So if I'm farther away, it's not going to zoom in and make my head such a big part of the shot. It will maintain this bigger picture right here. Whereas if I click a headshot from all the way out here, see what it does? So now as I'm sitting from back here, if I want to put some space between me and the webcam, it will still maintain the frame like this where my head occupies this much of the shot. And I have a big head. I'm big headed. I got a lot of hot air in there. All right. And again, half body. It kind of maintains this profile in your shot. So whole body. So if I'm standing back on the other side of room, 10 feet, 15 feet away, if I click this, it will try to keep my whole body in the shot from feet to head. So it gives you three options when you're away from your camera and you want it to track you, all right? Auto tracking, how much of you do you want in the shot? You can select from those three things. Really cool. Something else the Elgato uh, Face Cam Pro does not do. All right, anti-flicker. All right, that's auto, but you can change that from auto to 50 hertz or 60 hertz. And then um, auto focus and manual focus. So I have it on auto focus, so I don't have to worry about anything. But if you're going to turn the tracking off, so let me turn the tracking off. All right. So let's say I'm doing a microphone review. So there, the microphone's in focus, but I don't want it to leave the microphone as I'm moving around. Okay. So now I stay on, out of focus. The microphone stays in focus. So just another thing, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, whatever platform that you're, you're selling stuff like ring bombs or paparazzi or some of those other things that are out there, if you're moving around, but you don't want the camera to follow you around, you turn off the auto tracking, you turn off the autofocus and it stays focused on whatever it is that you're featuring, depending on whatever it is you want to do. And you're a one person production crew trying to do something, whether you're teaching or selling, that is awesome. I love that. Now what streamer mode does is it allows you to switch like right now it's in the wider shot the wider screen the 16.9 but if you want that portrait shot if you're on facebook selling something and you've got, you're always in that portrait mode so you can see the comments as they're rising up during your live stream if you're on there you click this this webcam has a three axis gimbal so that third thing is right pan tilt zoom so it goes left right up down the third thing it does is rotate vertically it'll only do it in web platforms live stream platforms that enable portrait mode HDR mode. HDR is high dynamic range, which basically it sacrifices a little bit of clarity and sharpness of your image, but it brings in more color. So if color is more important to you than like the ultra most high def image, that's what you would select. So we'll just kind of give it a, a, 
a look here in the shot, you can see that the red is very extreme and the blue, and there's not much in between those two colors. If I turn this HDR on, you can see it shows a lot more of the in-between. There's a bigger fade in there. There's a brighter color in the center of that spot. So you see a, a range now of red to orange in here. And same for the blues in that corner. I'm going to hide them wires right there because that's embarrassing. But you can see there's a more of a transition, a gradient effect that you get that you don't get when it's in the other. But again, when you have it in HDR mode and you're getting more of that gradient effect to get all of your colors in there, you're losing some of that image quality. I'm more about the image quality for me. If I'm going to pay this kind of money, I want a sharp image. I'm not worried about the colors. I can adjust that in post in color correction or again in my brightness, contrast, and saturation, all those things. So I leave that off. And as you see, there's a big jump back into clarity, but there's no more of that huge gradient effect in there. It's like red, but it's a solid one color kind of red, one shade of red, and then one shade of purple down in the corner. Mirror image, why is that important? Let's say that you're selling something and you have all the items listed behind you, like all of this stuff right here. With mirror image, if orientation is really important, like left and right, okay, to my left over here and my right, and it gets confusing because in this mode, like left is right and right is left, that drive you nuts. So you can click mirror mode on, and now when I say, hey, to my left, all right, now on your screen, you see me point left and I no, I'm pointing left, so we're all on the same page. To my right, over here. Now what it does is it just flips the image, but again, now the words and the background are flipped. So if writing is important, like you're trying to read, this is not good, but if you're just trying to sell something like, to my right, there's this stuff right here, and to my left, we have blank wall that is, you know, the most exciting visual you could ever see. That's what mirror mode is for. Oh, one other thing. This is really cool. The Insta360 Link comes with a built-in microphone, not just one, but two, so it records in stereo. And now you don't have to worry about using a studio microphone or being tied to your desk, You're not locked into the chair. You're now free to move. And not only that, but it's a powerful microphone. Now again, as you can hear now, it's not studio quality sound, like if you had a studio mic in front of you, but that's not why you would be using this microphone. This feature comes into play if you're moving around in the classroom. Let's follow me around, okay? I'm sitting here and I'm teaching a class about the Insta360 and all the wonderful things it does, how it can follow it, it does facial tracking, how I can sit here and I can hold this little zoom feature above my head, how we can zoom in as I'm talking, and we can zoom out as I'm talking, and it's still zooming out, it's still zooming out, it's still zooming out, and now they can see my full room behind me as I'm walking around. But, again, the microphone. I am now seven to eight feet away from the Insta360 link, and you're still getting powerful audio as far as reach. Now, I had to turn this down seven dBs on OBS because I was in the red just talking, normal voice. So you can move anywhere around a room that I would say would be 10 to 15, 20 feet, and it's going to pick up whatever it is you're saying no matter where you go in the room. So again, portability, functionality, compact, and quick. It does all those things, and it's really cool. Absolutely wonderful, cool feature, something else that the Elgato Facecam Pro can't do. It can't record your voice from a microphone. You're going to need another microphone. And if you're using your laptop, it doesn't have the reach that this microphone does. And again, you can get in there and you can get in close and the audio is going to prove. Now, there's a lot of echo in here because i moving things around. I took my sound treatment panels down, so there's a lot of echo and bouncing around. But I thought this was kind of important because a lot of people that are going to get this are teaching from their classroom. There's no sound treatment in there. So I wanted you guys to hear exactly what it sounds like in a typical room. And then if you start soundproofing it by putting up panels, carpet, things like that, the audio quality is going to get even better for you. Okay, quick recap. Pros and cons for each webcam. As we close out this video, let's go through them, starting with the Insta360 link. Pros, 4K30, uncompressed. Yes, I said 30 frames per second. Why is that a pro on my list when the Elgato Facecam Pro can do 60? Uncompressed video. Even though I'm 30 frames per second is my limit, I would rather sacrifice those 30 frames per second for better image quality. Again, if I'm going webcam, I want to maximize the quality of video I can get, especially for $300. So uncompressed footage, I appreciate that, and that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Three-axis gimbal, the pan, tilt, 
and zoom feature. Those are things that I cannot do on an Elgato Facecam Pro. I can go left, right, up, down, and vertical. Love that. AI tracking. I can move around the room and the camera is going to follow me. I've added a second person virtually, technically, and I don't have to hire them, feed them, pay them, clothe them, dress them. Kind of the same thing, isn't it? Anyways, and if they get hurt, they fall over. I don't have to worry about workman's comp. I'm just saying. Chew on that one. Anyway, <laughs> built-in dual microphone. Again, it's not the same quality as a studio microphone, but for $300, I like to have a backup plan. So if I'm trying to do a live stream and then I'm getting ready to go live and all of a sudden I'm glitching, I'm clipping, I've got an echo and I can't quite figure out what's going on. I know I've got a microphone built into this webcam that I can go to in a pinch if I'm getting ready to do my live stream. Number two, if I'm buying this simply because I'm a teacher in a classroom or in business calls, conference calls, or I'm buying this for simple FaceTime, family conference calls, Zoom calls, family and friends, you just want the people you're talking to to be able to hear your voice. So with this, I don't have to buy a separate microphone. You're still going to have to go out and get a USB microphone on top of your $300 purchase of the Elgato Facecam Pro. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And because it doesn't cost me anything extra to have the microphone built in, I mean, it's still $300. Thank you. I'll take it. Half the weight. If I've got this mounted on top of my laptop, that's a lot of weight that you're putting on the monitor, especially if you have to tilt it back or tilt it forward, depending on where you are at your desk, trying to do a live stream or video conference call from your laptop. And if I'm banging the desk or doing anything like that, the heavier it is, the more likely it is to move on you and you have to constantly adjust it. So I appreciate that it's half the weight and less stress on my laptop or my monitor that I have it mounted to. Higher resolution at 1080p and 720p. Again, if you're live streaming on Twitch or Facebook Live, you're capped off at 720p. So if I'm capped off there, I still want to be able to capture the best quality video I possibly can. And the Insta360 link does that. Low light performance. All right. It has an f-stop of 1.8. The Elgato Facecam Pro is 2.0. The lower the number is, the better it's going to perform in low light situations. So if you have a dark studio, that 1.8 is going to serve you better than the Elgato Facecam Pro. HDR mode, that high dynamic range. If you're an artist doing a live stream where color matters, it's going to give you a more dynamic range of colors to project to your viewers than the Elgato Facecam Pro can. Gesture control. Now that I can just use hand controls, I can leave my desk and operate my webcam from the other side of the room. The Elgato Facecam Pro, I can stand on the other side of the room, but if I want to move it to a different spot, or if I want to crop in or zoom in, I've got to leave that spot, come back to my desk, move my mouse around, then go back to the spot. Gesture controls, I can operate my camera from anywhere in the room. Portrait mode, if you like to do TikTok videos, Facebook live streaming, IG reels, now you can incorporate the AI tracking so as you're dancing around the room, the Insta360 link is going to follow you so you don't have to worry about making sure you stay in that shot. Privacy mode, the Elgato Facecam Pro or the Facecam, you've got to reach up and mount and refasten the lens on that and sometimes you can forget i love that feature it automatically does it for you so you don't have to worry about forgetting to put the cap back on whiteboard mode we went over that the ability to zoom in on a whiteboard by hand gesture and then zoom back onto your face with a hand gesture it also has six saved presets in the software so now i can save different shots so again i'm a camera person and a control room person while I am the talking headshot and it just zips right to that angle, that shot, that zoomed in preset that you love within your studio. Desktop mode, we went over that. Uh, it also has the overhead mode. Those are two things that you're not going to get with the Elgato Facecam Pro because that's not automatic. You got to reach up and move it manually. With these, you click a button, it just goes there. Digital joystick and zoom. That is really huge because, again, I don't have to reach up and move stuff and people see my hand as I'm trying to adjust it. That can be annoying. I can literally just go to my digital joystick and move the camera left and right, as you see here, and I can zoom in and out. Also, USB-A adapter. So it is a USB-C to USB-C cable that comes with it, but with the kit, you get the USB-A adapter, which you can plug into any USB hub, your laptop, or desktop. So you have options there. Con, this is one of the reasons why it took me a week to do this video. When I first did it, I really didn't want to put any cons down. I absolutely love this webcam, but I wanted to be fair 
and I wanted to get over the initial emotions and how awesome this webcam was. So I'm being nitpicky here, but I want to be fair. So these are the things I wish, if I could have my way, would be changed. The con, 4K30. Yes, it's uncompressed in a higher quality, but I would still love the option to have 4K60 footage so I have more opportunities to slow down footage in post when I'm producing videos for YouTube and not have to worry about that jittery, glittery, lagging, jagged video footage, okay? It's not choppy. No travel case. That's another thing that I didn't like. Now, I'm going to be traveling with this thing everywhere because I love this webcam that much, but I'm going to be nervous moving it around in my bag because it has the three-axis gimbal, and when the motor's not on, it moves real easy. So I'm going to have to constantly put it inside this box when I travel. Now, as small as the webcam is, the case is huge, just to kind of tell you how like the webcam fits inside here, but I've got to carry it in this huge case. Now, I would absolutely love if Insta360 could create a travel case that could protect it that is closer to the profile of the webcam. Nitpicking, I know. The USB-C cable, my Mac Mini is mounted to the right side of my desk. It's a 48-inch long desk. It's a long stretch with the cable that they provide, and if cable management matters to you, it's really tough to get your cable management to look good and get that distance. So I'm going to have to go out and buy another USB-C to USB-C cable to be able to get it where I want it and hide the cable. And also, if I want to mount it on a wall or on the other side of the room, I'm going to need a longer cable. There's not a huge amount of people that are going to say, I want a 15, 20-foot USB-C cable in my box. I'm not that guy. No, I, I, would, I know that's, that's a me thing. Okay. Zoom hand gesture up close. When I put my hand up and hand down, it grabs it really quick, especially when I'm talking and moving my hands around. It's latched on a couple times. So it is really fast at latching on to that activation of AI tracking. But when I'm trying to zoom, I notice the closer I am, the laggier it is and the slower it is to pick up and respond to it. And if I'm trying to zoom in or zoom out, as you can see, I've got my hand here and look how much I'm moving it around before it really responds to what I'm doing. And I've got like here, it's now flash blue, so it's recognized it. I've put my hand down and you can see how slow it is and it stops and I move it up. So again, up close, the zoom feature as far as hand recognition is a little bit slow. But I'm, that's, this is nitpicking again because when I'm this close and I'm at my desk, I would rather just use the gimbal on here because I'm able to get where I want by zooming in on the software on my monitor a lot quicker and move this thing left and right like I want to a lot quicker. Pros and cons of the Elgato Facecam Pro. Now again, I don't have one myself. I went with Harris Heller's video because I know he's going to bring the goods. He's going to bring the juice when it comes to showing you how good something is, good and bad. So I went to his video and what I noticed and what I wrote down the pros and cons from his video review about why to get or not get the Elgato Facecam Pro. 4K 60 footage. Again, even though it's compressed, if 60 frames per second matters to you and you're still not interested in upgrading to a mirrorless camera, you still want to keep it to a webcam, this is the best option for 4K 60. And again, that also allows you 60 frames per second. It gives you more opportunity to get slow motion footage out of your regular footage without it getting choppy on you. It has a larger sensor. I do believe it's the only webcam out there with a full frame sensor, whereas the Insta360 Link is a half inch sensor. Now, why is that a big thing? Well, while I think the Insta360 Link is ahead right now in its software features and capabilities, Elgato Facecam Pro can always upgrade their software and their firmware, and they're working with a large full frame sensor, whereas whatever upgrades Insta360 Link wants to do, they can do software and firmware updates, but they're always going to be working with a half inch sensor. But again, if that meant having a bigger footprint, I don't want it. I like the size of this camera. I don't want it any bigger. That's a pro for the Elgato Facecam Pro. If size of the webcam doesn't matter to you, you just want that sensor. The cons, no built-in microphone. Again, it's not a deal breaker, but again, if Insta360 Link is able to make this and have the microphone built into it at the same price at no extra cost, to me, that's a con for the Elgato Facecam Pro because if I want to use the Elgato Facecam Pro, I need another microphone if I have a desktop that doesn't have a built-in microphone. 
No HDR mode, that was another one. It just doesn't have it. And if color range is really important to you, that's something the Insta360 link does provide that this doesn't at the same price point. Slower autofocus. Now, this is really nitpicking, honestly. Do you really ever notice it? Not until they're side by side. But if I had to choose between the two and they're both $300 and I do a live stream where I'm selling product, ring bombs, paparazzi, whatever it is that's out there and you're showing multiple products, it can be tiresome to sit there and keep lifting stuff up and have to wait that half second to one second extra for the webcam to catch up to what you're doing, to zoom into your face, to zoom into what you're holding up. The Insta360 is faster. It does everything in under two seconds, whereas the Elgato Facecam Pro is two seconds, sometimes more. And that can add up over the course of a show if you're trying to showcase product. All right, and finally, the most important thing of all the things, pros and cons on both lists, this is the thing that we all started the video with at $300 for a webcam that just sits on top of your monitor and never moves. I would rather upgrade to a mirrorless camera for $400 or get a used camera at that price or a GoPro, which I can unplug. It'll capture 4K footage and I can use it outside to capture video. I can use it to capture still frame photos and I can use it in the rain and I can use it in here at the same price of the Elgato Facecam Pro. But there are always those people out there that reach out to me and said, Mike, I just want easy. I don't want to deal with cameras. I don't want to deal with any of that. I just want the highest quality image at 60 frames that I can get in a webcam. Then you can't go wrong with this, and I can't argue with you. But then out comes the Insta360 link, and now I can get 4K footage, even though it's 30 frames per second. They are so similar. It is neck and neck in video footage, but I can do so many more things for my $300 than I can the Elgato Facecam Pro. I can put this in portrait mode and record TikToks and dance all over the room, and it's going to follow me. I don't have to worry about staying inside that frame. I can use the built-in microphone in case I have audio problems, or if I just want to do a quick video conference call with friends, family, or work. It's right there. I don't have to hook up extra gear, and it's easier to travel with. It's smaller. It's a smaller footprint. So again, and it's got the three-axis gimbal. It's got the PTZ, zoom, right, pan, tilt, zoom, and the facial tracking. You can check so many more boxes as far as what you can do and your capabilities in your live stream with this. I now have the ability to do the work of three people. I have a control room at my, my fingertips. I have a cameraman at my fingertips, and I'm able to be my talking head the focus of the show from here in my seat. And I can do all those things with this. And I can't do any of those things with the Elgato Facecam Pro mounted on top of my monitor. For $300, when I'm making that kind of investment on any equipment, I always ask myself, does it solve more than one problem? Does this help create more opportunities, multiple ways I can increase and improve my video content for my viewers? And the Insta360 link does that. It adds a cameraman to my studio. It adds a controller to my control room, which is me. And it's automated. And it's tiny. And it has a microphone. Thank you. So finally, there is a webcam out there for $300 that I can finally recommend to people who say, look, I want a webcam, the best of the best. And this one's $300. What do you think I should do? I'm going to tell them if it's the Insta360 link, absolutely go get you one because, man, it's going to open up so many doors for you as far as your content creation. There you go. Thank you for watching another episode of Level Up. I'm Mike Newman. So until the next time, I'll see you in the next one from all over the place. I, I, I'll sit, I might be seeing you over here or over here. But for all you TikTokers out there, you can simply do this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.